What's up, New Life Church? Y'all, my name's Kevin, and contrary to what it sounds like with my voice, I am not a 20-year chain smoker, but instead, uh, we just finished up camp last week as you're watching this. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that, man, all our staff sounds like this. Um, We had 299 kids, over 120 volunteers, who had a ton of fun, worshiped with reckless abandon. And man, we looked deeply into the face of Jesus. And what started at camp, we're praying that it continues into this week as you're watching this video, to the next week through the school year and into the, throughout the lives of these kids. And so join us in praying um, for that. But even with this voice, we're gonna press on in our study of the book of Matthew. And today we are reading um, in Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11, what is traditionally called the triumphal entry, where Jesus is coming into Jerusalem for the final week of his life, preparing for the Passover celebration. And as he approaches the city, he asks two of his disciples, hey, go get me a donkey. And even the way that he gets the, the cult of a donkey is miraculous in how he pulls it off. And um, as they come in, he mounts up on this unridden colt. And as they come into the city, people gather and they throw palm branches on the ground. They throw, um, and they begin to shout, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and it's this amazing celebration, this this triumphal entry. This story is one of the rare ones that appears actually in all four of the Gospels. And in John's version, I love it because it says that looking back when Jesus came into his glory, the disciples look back and they realize, they're like, oh my goodness. This is a fulfillment of Zechariah 9.9. I'm, I'm guessing that they were in synagogue one day and somebody read from the scroll and they go, oh my goodness, Jesus rode in on a donkey because Zechariah 9.9 says this, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey. But church, here's what I want us to to recognize and to see this morning is Jesus was humble long before he mounted up on a donkey's colt. You see, we read in Philippians 2 that Jesus emptied himself. Um, Another version says it this way, that Jesus gave up his divine privilege. You see, the humility of God is seen so clearly in the life of Jesus, the fact that he stepped out of heaven, somehow gave up, chose not to use his divinity as he had human flesh on him, and he lived like us, that he experienced every temptation, every weakness that you and I will ever encounter, Jesus somehow tasted and experienced that because of his humility. And Paul goes on to tell us in Philippians 2 that not only did he empty himself and take on flesh, but that he also humbled himself to die. And not only to die one of the most painful forms of execution ever experienced by humanity and that he died on the cross. Church, can we just can we just take a moment and recognize and realize what Jesus did, the fact that he was a humble God because God died. I mean, I mean, can we just understand the humility of those two words put together, God died. And so when we come face to face with a humble king riding on a donkey, how do we respond? What is a proper response to a humble God? And it's simply, number one, a proper response is that we worship. 
we worship. You see, whenever you come face to face with the greatness and the goodness of God, when you come to all his omnis, omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence, that he is beyond anything that we can imagine, and yet that he is a humble God that forgives our sins, shows us mercy, that gives us grace, that draws close to us when the greatness and the goodness of God come together, the only proper response is for us to fall on our face before him and to worship him in all his greatness and in all his goodness. But the other proper response is that number two is that we follow Jesus. We follow the humble king. You see, we call ourselves Christians. And that simply means little Christs. We follow Christ's example. And so how do we show the humility of Jesus? Well, it may be this. You may need to love someone you disagree with. That you may need to push aside the, 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 the ideological disagreements and love them regardless. Another way that we follow the example of our humble king is you may need to be teachable. And for some of you, this may be difficult. You may need to learn something from someone who you think you know more than them. That is humility that we learn from people that we think we are beyond, people that we think that we have advanced past. But humility invites us to be teachable to all, to learn something from everybody. And the other way that we might follow the example of the humble king is you might need to serve someone who you don't think deserves being served. Right? You look at them and you say, man, they're not working hard enough. I bet this happened. I bet this is going on. I bet they're trying to manipulate the system. Humility invites you to serve them, even though you don't think they deserve it. And while you're at it, we, you might need to repent of that mindset because after all, aren't you a recipient of grace? So again, in the triumphal entry, the disciples looking back when Jesus came into the glory, they go, oh my goodness, he fulfilled the prophecy in Zechariah. He was the humble king. When we come face to face with the humble king, church, we need to respond in worship. And we need to respond by following his example. Let me pray for us. Humble king, we praise you because you deserve it. Your greatness is overwhelming. You spoke the world into existence and yet your goodness overwhelms us because you speak the same lips that spoke the world into being, speaks kindness and comfort to a sinful man like myself. I praise you for that. May you help us to follow your example as we move through the world today. We pray it in the name of that humble King, Jesus. Amen. Church, have a great day. Be blessed. We'll talk to you soon.